Today, in this first week of Lent, we will examine one of the most popular English hymns of all time, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross. Now, every hymn in our hymnal has a specific text and a specific hymn tune, words versus music. They can be used together or separately. The method of matching the tune to the text begins and sometimes ends with meter, determined by the number of syllables included in a line. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her king. Let every heart prepare him room, and heaven and nature sing. That was eight syllables, six syllables, eight syllables, six syllables, or what we call common meter. Our God, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come, our shelter from the stormy blast and our eternal home, thinking syllabically, eight, six, eight, six, again, common meter. And now coming back to our hymn of the day, when I survey the wondrous cross on which the Prince of Glory died, my richest gain I count but loss, and poor contempt on all my pride. All those lines had eight syllables, so that's 8888, eight, 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 which is called long meter. So the hymnal creators had to find a hymn tune that would match with that. We are singing this hymn today to the tune Hamburg, which was written by the American hymn composer Lowell Mason, first published in the Boston Handel and Haydn Society collection in 1825. Interestingly, this hymn tune is an arrangement of the first Gregorian tone, Gregorian chant, from the ninth century. Do, 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 When I survey the wondrous cross. You hear they're exactly the same. Now the text. This poetry was written by Isaac Watts, 1674 to 1748 who was known as the father of English hymnody. Based on Galatians 6.14, this hymn was published in Hymns and Spiritual Songs in London, published in 1707. Up until Watts's time and influence, John Calvin had encouraged his followers to sing only metrical psalms, psalms which were rewritten to fit in with the tunes. Isaac Watts did not reject metrical psalmody, but he wanted the words to bring more emotion and feeling. I quote him, they ought to be translated in such a manner as we have reason to believe David would have composed them if he had lived in our day. Watts wrote numerous hymn texts, 12 of which appear in our hymnal alone, including Joy to the World, Psalm 98, Jesus Shall Reign, Psalm 72, O God, Our Help in Ages Past, Psalm 90, all of which many of his English colleagues couldn't recognize as valid translations of these psalms. However, Percy Dearmer, late 19th century British minister, author, and liturgist, writes of this hymn that Watts, quote, in his moment of inspiration, belongs to the great line of English poets. When I survey the wondrous cross is not only the result of a moment of inspiration for Watts, but also has been a great source of inspiration for countless Christians, both in life and in their Lenten journeys. Most hymnals do not include this omitted text. His dying crimson like a robe, spreads o'er his body on the tree. Then am I dead to all the globe, and all the globe is dead to me. Instead, the hymn we sing ends this way. Were the whole realm of nature mine, that were a present or tribute far too small, love so amazing, so divine, demands my soul, my life, my all. We invite you to join us virtually on Sunday, March 21st at 4 p.m. for a Lenten hymn sing, where we'll have the chance to continue to raise our voices to God with glorious traditional hymnody.